Welcome to our first in-person research symposium, of the Digital Transformation Institute, sponsored by C3.ai. Um, I think I left my <laughs> clicker there. Thank you. Uh, I'll spend a few minutes going over our accomplishments over the last two years. The Institute was started in uh, March 2020 when we all heard about COVID. And so we've been in existence for about two years. Okay, so our mission is to bring together scientists from all over the world and from academia and industry to use AI, machine learning, and cloud computing to solve problems of interest to humanity at large. In particular, we're interested in the digital transformation of business, government, and society. We have a number of partners. So these are our academic partners. So Carnegie Mellon University, uh, uh, KTH, uh, MIT, Princeton, Stanford, Berkeley, University of Chicago, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and uh, uh, Berkeley National Lab. While uh, NCSA is part of Illinois, Berkeley, and, and, uh, Berkeley Lab and, and NCSA provide uh, the high-performance computing support for our institute. So we also have a number of uh, industry partners. Of course, uh, C3.ai is the sponsor of our uh, institute. Uh, Microsoft is a major uh, a cloud computing provider for, for the Azure platform is available for free to the uh, 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 researchers at the Institute. And we have three other industry partners, AstraZeneca, Baker Hughes, and, and Shell. And Shell is here represented by their chief data scientist, Detlef Hall, who will, who will talk later today. So this is the organization of the Institute. So we have an advisory board uh, with uh, Tom Siebel, who's the chairman and CEO of C3.ai. He's the chair of our advisory board. Uh, Eric Horvitz, uh, chief scientific officer of Microsoft. And Shankar Shastri, uh, uh, former dean of engineering and currently professor of electrical engineering at, and computer sciences at Berkeley, uh, who is the uh, uh, other co-director of the Institute. We also have uh, an executive committee um, the executive committee uh, um, advises us on the activities of the institute. So the uh, committee consists of two chief scientists, one from uh, Berkeley, Costa Spanos, and uh, my colleague, Tandy Warno in computer science at Illinois. And we have, uh, uh, in addition to Shankar and me, we have one representative from each of the institutions on the executive committee. And uh, they include Jonathan Carter from uh, a Berkeley lab, uh, Mike Franklin, University of Chicago, Carla Johansson from KTH, Chris Manning uh, from Stanford, Asu Ozdagler from uh, MIT, Vince Poor, Princeton, uh, Bill Sanders, who's here, uh, uh, and, and Shankar Shast, and, and I guess the rest of the people I've already mentioned. Yeah. So uh, we'll I'll briefly talk about the research program and, the, and what we have been doing over the last couple of years. So one of our activities is to give out research awards. So several of you who are here from, from, uh, um, the, uh, from academia are people who have received research awards from us. So uh, every year we give out something between five to six million dollars of uh, uh, funding and uh, uh, in the form of grants ranging from 100,000 to 500,000. And these are typically multi-university interdisciplinary projects. And the uh, awards are supported by computing resources from C3AI, which, uh, who provide the AI software tools, which run on the Microsoft Azure platform and high-performance computing support from NCSA and Berkeley Lab. We also have a wonderful colloquium series, um, which uh, uh, occurs every Thursday afternoon. And uh, uh, this, is a, this is a series of online talks. And, uh, um, I'm, I'm very happy to say that apparently we've had uh, um, audiences from 80 different, 80 plus different countries around the world for our, for our colloquium and workshop series. And uh, this is the list of uh, uh, colloquia that we've had, and uh, I'm not going to go through all of them. But I guess uh, one thing I want to say is that the colloquium series is, is uh, uh, populated by speakers who, who are both awardees for our, from our research grants and also the general science of digital transformation. Okay, so uh, um, this semester we are trying something thematic. So before we were, we were not as thematic, but this semester 
Mostly we've been uh, uh, having uh, colloquia about the uh, on topics of the intersection of learning and game theory. So, so if you're interested, you should definitely check them out. Uh, by the way, all of these are available on YouTube. So, so even if you, if you want to go back and listen to any of the talks, you can go to our YouTube channel and, and watch them there. We also hold a number of uh, workshops. These workshops are typically uh, two to three day events. And they've all been online so far. We might transition to in-person workshops uh, later on. And we've had a number of interesting topics. Uh, so the first workshop was on the commonalities and differences between uh, uh, epidemics, opinion, and misinformation models. So I think most of you may know that you know, there are mathematical models that tell you how epidemics spread. And these were influential in figuring out how to combat COVID. And similarly, there are models uh, uh, which tell you how misinformation spreads on the internet and, 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 and how opinions spread. I mean, you know, if, do, you, do you like uh, uh, how uh, President X is doing or if you don't like, uh, you know, or, or do you not like how they are doing and so on. So th these things actually, I mean, you're influenced by other people in the world, which is very similar to how, I mean, epidemics spread. And interestingly, so these models have a lot of common themes and there are also significant differences that are very uh, subject matter oriented. And our first workshop was organized by Deva Bracha at MIT and Lei Ying at the University of Michigan on this topic. Um, so the next one was on analytical foundations of deep learning. It was organized by Yi Ma at Berkeley and Rene Vidal. And it was kind of, again, an interesting, in our workshops, we try to bring together people with multiple perspectives. So uh, there are people working in uh, uh, deep learning who are computer scientists, applied mathematicians, statisticians, uh, uh, people in uh, signal processing. They all have slightly different views of how, why deep networks are so successful as, as a, a tool of artificial intelligence. And, and uh, this workshop explored uh, these various themes. Um, there was a workshop on safe autonomy. I don't have to introduce autonomous systems to you. I mean, you've heard of drones, you've heard of uh, uh, um, mixed human uh, uh, um, and, and, and AI-based autonomy, which are already, you know, may, have already made their way into cars like Tesla. And, and this, this uh, uh, particular workshop, organized by Gare Delarude at Illinois and Claire Tomlin at, at uh, Berkeley, was, was unusual because we had a number of uh, uh, industry folks from here. For example, Lars Blackmore from SpaceX gave a talk. And you know, till the last minute, we weren't sure if he was going to be able to give a talk because it was a launch of SpaceX. And, and he had to figure out when the launch would be before he could uh, give a talk. So it was, uh, you know, we had some really exciting talks like that. And he had to get uh, uh, permission from Elon Musk to talk at our, uh, uh, this, this workshop. Um, and and uh, this workshop was organized, the next one was on data-driven decision-making in socio-technical systems. It was organized by Saurabh Amin at MIT, Alex Madri at MIT, and Asu Ostagler also from uh, MIT. And this workshop was, again, as you can probably see from the uh, uh, list of topics, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, speakers addressed issues all the way from transportation to how news feeds are ranked and shown to you on, on Google or Facebook or things like that. And again, the interesting thing about many of these workshops, something I've already mentioned, it, it, many topics, it's very interesting. You go to these conferences and, and uh, you only meet people who work, who, who are, you know, very, very uh, uh, disciplinary. I mean, you know only about your area. And, and, and these workshops bring together people from, from uh, uh, many, many different disciplines. And, and so it was, uh, it's been very interesting and illuminating for, for, for me in particular. I've learned a lot. Um, and then there was this uh, workshop was organized it's on uh, machine learning for a resilient, secure, carbon-free electricity supply. It was organized by Duncan Calloway, uh, Alejandro Dominguez Garcia, and Maria Illich. Uh, it was on, uh, it, this, this, this workshop informed our second Call for proposals, so which was on which was on energy and climate security, and uh, uh, the current call for proposals for which the research award would be announced tomorrow was preceded by uh, this uh, a workshop on data analy analytics and uh, security and privacy. How does AI help with cybersecurity, for example? And uh, uh, um, this workshop uh, was on networks of machine learning, for machine learning, and by machine learning. So this is about how 5G and 6G networks are influenced by AI. And it was organized by Manya Gobadi and Muriel Medard, both at uh, MIT. And I think this was the latest workshop that we had. Uh, this was organized by one of our uh, chief scientists, Costas Spanos. 
And this was about uh, smart buildings. You know, so, so I, I mean, you all know what a smart building is. I mean, there are all kinds of AI applications in a, in a building that are sort of emerging and are already in, in buildings. And the question is, you know, what, you know, what is the future going to look like here? Um, we are, we've also developed the AI short course. Let me see, track of time. Uh, um, and the AI short course is basically the idea is to, to help people get into AI who don't have a strong background in it. In fact, the, you know, you, you may, maybe have a basic programming background and you want to learn about AI. And um, so the course is, uh, um, it's, it's not in place yet, but it's, it's mostly developed. So it, it gives a basic introduction to the C3 AI platform. Um, and then we talk about uh, data analytics and then uh, uh, more into machine learning, basic concepts in machine learning, such as you know, gradient descent and you know, logistic regression and, and various uh, uh, tools you can use for, for, for doing machine learning type of analysis. Uh, and then specifically how to use the C3 AI suite for machine learning and finally, some more advanced concepts on, on deep learning and graph neural networks and many other things. So some of the, uh, uh, I want to highlight some of the research projects and, and uh, what came out of them. So our, as I mentioned, our first call was on uh, um, um, mitigating, how to use AI to mitigate uh, COVID-19 and possibly future pandemics. A number of topics were, were covered in the call for proposals. Um, and based on the, uh, I think we had like 190 submissions or something like that, and we have 26 proposals were selected, and they range uh, topics from the topics range from mathematical modeling, control, and logistics. Uh, these are people who use mathematics to figure out how how uh, um, pandemics evolve, and and you know if you put in controls such as masking or other other controls, you know how does it change the progress of the epidemic? Um, we had uh, uh, AI for epidemi proposals addressing AI for epidemiology, social good, and, and clinical, clinical use. Um, vaccine and drug discovery, uh, computational biology. So as you can see, these, these topics span the entire spectrum of the various uh, uh, ideas you could use to combat an epidemic. Um, so here are some highlights. So, so there was an interesting tool developed called COVID Analytics, and which was widely used during the epidemic that came out of uh, uh, funding that our institute uh, gave. And then there was, a, 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 again, another tool that, that was used to inform individuals and organizations about testing strategies in various environments. And uh, there was something called COVID Scholar, which is a natural language processing tool, which allowed people, I mean, there was massive amount of literature created during COVID by the academic community, and, and it's impossible to sift through and sort and figure out you know, how, to understand and how to understand them, how can we use them in uh, uh, real life, and, and this COVID scholar helped you do it. I mean, it, it went through documents, and we used natural language processing to figure out you know, which documents fit together and so on, so uh, it provided a tool to do that. Uh, uh, by the way, I mean, uh, you will, uh, I'm not associating any names with these uh, uh, projects, so these are uh, uh, were done by the wonderful researchers that we were uh, that we funded, and you will hear about many of these during the individual technical talks, as well as the poster sessions. So please, I encourage you to go to them. Uh, and, and so here's another one, which is uh, audio cues for COVID-19, and here's an example of a project which has uh, which probably will have benefits well beyond COVID. So the idea is that you know you 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 take a video or audio of yourself, and then and then send it to your doctor. I mean, let's say you're unable to go to the hospital. And then the idea is that can you, from audio and video, can you actually figure out you know, what, is, what, is the, the, you know, what is wrong with the person, how to treat them, and so on. And as you can see, that, that could be definitely helpful for remote healthcare beyond just, just COVID. So mostly our projects are like that. We want to get uh, uh, um, some results within a year. But at the same time, the projects also are selected with some long-term benefits in mind as well. Okay, and then uh, we also looked at, uh, uh, so this is an example of, of uh, the social impact. So one of our projects addressed pandemic effects on housing precarity. So uh, homelessness is a big problem in the US, as many of you know, and it was particularly exacerbated during COVID because many people were unable to work and you know, there were, the government helped to some extent uh, preventing people from being evicted, but, but this, this, is a, this is a major problem. And uh, there was a group that we funded, and I think you'll be hearing about, uh, from them about this project, who, who track 
you know, uh, uh, they, they use some databases to figure out, you know, who is most likely to be in, in trouble. And then you try to help them. I mean, you know, which areas of the city or, or, or you know, try to, you, you proactively try to figure out, you know, who is in danger of be, becoming homeless. And so, so this, these, are, these are not directly, it's not a healthcare or medicine project, but these are more social impact type of projects. Um, our second call for proposals was on digital transformation of AI and, and climate energy, uh, climate security. Um, so we funded a number of projects again here, uh, ranging from sustainability, AI for carbon sequestration, smart grid analytics, cybersecurity, which also is a theme in the current call for proposals, and distributed energy resource management, AI for improved climate change modeling, and AI for improved natural catastrophe risk assessment. Uh, so these projects are still ongoing. These were projects funded around June or July of last year. So, so I, didn't, uh, uh, I don't have uh, uh, completed information about these projects, but I just want to point out some highlights. You know, our, 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 our awardees won other awards, I mean, best paper awards and career awards and so on. And there's also a significant amount of industry collaboration uh, 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 with respect to this, this call for proposals. So there's multiple companies uh, involved, Uber, Eindride, AB, Scania, AB, and, and a startup named FICOs and so on. Um, so the current call for proposals is on AI to transform cybersecurity and secure critical infrastructure. And the uh, uh, awards, the, the uh, awardees will be announced tomorrow and there'll be a panel with uh, some of the awardees you know, to discuss what will, what will happen during the next year. 